Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. And in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to absolutely dominate your game on Braum. And to make this video even better, it is yet again a collaborated video. This time, I got you guys a top one again. Keys. His name is Coinflip Support here, but this is actually a smurf. Um, Keys is the best Braum player that I've ever seen. And you can see it, top one in the EU server for the majority of times. So he has a Twitch as well. If I can just quickly show you, there it is. And he has been streaming more than usual. So if you want to check him out, really, really entertaining stream. I absolutely wa love watching it. So I'm um, linked to his links to his socials in the description. Just quickly as well, I've picked the 10 winners of the legendary skins of the skin giveaway. Um, I, th there is a few details on how to claim your skin. Like I made a new Twitter account just to claim your skin. It's going to be much easier this time. Um, all the details are going to be in the top comment. And I'm going to put all the details in the description. The reason is because YouTube has been deleting my comments for some reason. So in the case that you do not see the top, top comment, check the description you may be written there as the winner, okay? So, in the beginning part of the video, I'm going to explain to you guys how to build Braum. There's timestamps in the description if you just want to skip to the gameplay. This is Keys' build, and um, I have played Braum myself too, and I really like this build as well. So, let's talk about it. You start off with a redemption, and the reason that he has this, uh, the plated steel caps is because basically in like 90% of the games, you're going to be going for plated steel caps. You want to become an unkillable tank as a Braum, and... The thing is, Braum already has a shield which blocks projectiles, so he's quite good against that magic damage in general. But um, he needs to block attack damage, and that's where the armor comes in. Of course, it's situational. You know, if you need a Mercury Threads, of course you go for the Mercury Threads, uh, you know, against the CC. But generally, you're going to be going for the Plated Steel Caps. And Redemption, always, like, always. So this, like... Besides the fact that Redemption is already pretty good, the big, big, big reason that Redemption is especially good on Braum is because of Braum's ultimate. Braum's ultimate knocks up enemies and creates an icy area that slows all of the enemies. And what it's going to do, it's going to give you a free hit on your Redemption. So during a team fight or during a skirmish, you can very easily ult the enemy and instantly use your redemption and i've seen keys play a lot of braum and this is where i'm going to be giving you guys a lot of the tips as well you know like the really good tips he uses redemption like that very often where he you know like he's ulting the enemy and he instantly uses redemption because it's a guaranteed hit so for your first item dead man's plate you can go for a zeke's convergence as well if you're if you want to be more reliant on your dragon laner but Keys likes to go for the Dead Man's Plate for the movement speed, and especially, this also depends on your playstyle, if you're a, a, um, a support player that likes to roam around, which is generally going to be the best way to play Braum, by the way, then Dead Man's Plate is going to be infinitely better. The simple reason is this right here. Plus 5% bonus movement speed and momentum grants you up to 50 movement speed. This is going to allow you to roam around. And the beauty is, Keys also uses Pathfinder. Mm. Uh, no, sorry. Keys also uses Pathfinder just to be able to roam around. So if you're asking me why would I go for Deadman's Plate before Zeke's Convergence, I understand that Zeke's Convergence would probably provide more value to the average player. But if you want to play Braum like a real pro, then you want to start with a dead man's plate and learn, uh, teach yourself to roam around. But again, it is okay if you don't. But if you don't roam around a lot, make sure you start with the Zeke's Convergence. Um, so yeah, if you go for the dead man's plate, second item Zeke's Convergence. And as a support, you're not you're not very often going to be getting three, four, or five items. Your first two items and your enchantment are obviously the most important. So yeah, Redemption, dead man's plate, Zeke's Convergence. These are going to be your items. Then it becomes completely situational. Do you need anti-crit? You go for the Randoon's Omen. Do you need magic resist? You go for force of nature. Do you want to protect your teammate against assassins? You go for protector's vow. Do you want to have Warmock, you know, for the he for the health and for you to restore health passively all the time? Then you go for Warmock. Do you need anti-healing? You go for Thormil. It's like completely, completely situational. Just make sure you get the Dead Man's Plate and the Zeke's Converges. By the way, Randoon's Omen is just such a great item on Braum. Try to incorporate it in your build. Like if the enemy has any sort of critical damage this is going to be such a game changer because you can already tank up so much damage because of your shield 
and this is this is going to reduce the crit damage even further and it's going to reduce the attack speed of the enemy so try to incorporate the randomness omen in your build if you can so as i said completely situational here right like just make sure you get these items so for the roots you go for font of life keys you know what's funny keys actually tested airy on braum and he said that it's not bad but he's you know his font of life is still superior and as you can see he's still going for it about the aftershock rune not really worth it it's just braum like very often you're going to be poking with braum with the first ability right and while it can be good to get the aftershock you know to become tanky you're just not going to be utilizing it too often not like the font of life font of life skills amazingly with bonus hp and especially if you're starting with a dead man's plate compared to a zeke's convergence it's going to be even more valuable because dead man's plate is going to give you 250 bonus max health uh zeke's convergence doesn't give you any bonus max health so that's why especially with this build font of life is going to be the best thing to do second rule you go for weakness because first ability slows the enemy your ultimate slows the enemy you know it's, it's it just provides so much value to your team you're constantly going to be applying the weakness when you use your first ability just just go for it and your passive applies weakness when you stun an enemy with your passive that also applies the weakness third when you go for hunter titan and <clears throat> hunter titan uh yes because keys mentioned that you really need that tenacity um because if you actually fail to use your third ability while dashing to an ally for example you can be chain cc'd and die so in case you feel something like that the tenacity is going to allow you to get back on your feet and use that shield so you need that tenacity don't like don't underestimate cc especially when you play braum because like 90 percent of well 50 percent of braum's tankiness comes from the shield 50% is a lot. You want to be utilizing it, so that's why you go for the tenacity. And then fourth rune, you can go for whichever you want. Pathfinder, if you want to play it like keys, and which I would say is the best way, the roaming brom, make sure you go for Pathfinder. But you can also go for Hunter Genius for the cooldown reduction. Pack Hunter, if you want to chase enemies, these are all good. So for the spells, you want to go for Heal and Flash. You can go for Exhaust if the enemy has like an Evelyn, Zed, or Master Yi, or really just anything you want to be exhausting. But um, Heal is generally going to be better. So enough about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. Boom. There we go. So this is, this is going to be a very exciting video because let me just turn it down a little bit, by the way, for myself because it's a little too loud for me. Uh, let me turn it down for you guys as well because i feel like it's a little too loud um yes so let's take a look at how keys plays brawl and it's absolutely stunning to watch this man play brawl because i've seen it on stream already you guys have probably not seen it already and that's why i'm really really trying to encourage you guys to follow him on twitch he doesn't stream too often but when he does it's absolutely amazing to watch he not only plays support he also plays other roles but he's mostly a support player and for you support mains out there it should be a no-brainer to follow him like already click on the twitch in the description to follow him um, follow him on twitter as well you know he has some funny tweets but yeah let's, let's now focus on the game Ow. this is the first thing that he's doing and although they're not trading too well this is the right thing to do as a brom this was actually quite an unfortunate event uh unfortunate how do you say it in english unfortunate it was unfortunate let me tell you why it was unfortunate um he he hit his first ability on a Caitlyn, which applies his stacks, his, his passive, you know, which stuns the enemy and deals a lot of damage. Vayne did some attacks, but Vayne didn't follow through. All Vayne had to do was hit one more attack to stun the enemy. And the stun is really strong. This is a thing about Braum that you really want to be utilizing. Like the stun that he gets from the passive, which I believe is between one and one and a half seconds. I don't know the exact number. is big. It's a really, really big stun. So all they had to do was just one more basic attack and they would have stunned the Caitlyn and out-traded the Caitlyn. But Vayne didn't follow through, unfortunately, but it's okay. So as a Braum, your first ability is strong. This ability deals a lot of damage. And now the beauty of the first ability is it deals bonus damage equal to the enemy's max HP. So even against tanks, you're going to do a lot of damage. So as a Brom, just use this ability. Like, like really the easy tip that I have for you guys before we get into the advanced stuff about Brom, just use it. You know, wherever you can, just use it. Even if you hit a frontline, just do it. If you can, you know, if you can get value from it, do it because it's going to apply your stack on the enemy 
and if your allies can follow through you can stun the enemy do a lot of damage and it's even good to just poke the enemy like right here i expect him to go for it yeah oh he missed it but the idea is just go for it it does so much damage it's just worth it um, so Braum is notorious for the third ability, right? The, 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 the massive shield. That's what Braum is notorious for. And we can clearly see his insane shield. And that's, you know, what you have to play around. Braum is obviously really good against enemies where you can utilize the shield against. Now, what is Braum not good against? Braum is not good against enemies where your shield is not good against, right? Champions like Olaf. Olaf is insanely good against Braum, by the way. The reason is because Olaf can, uh, you know, Braum has a lot of CC. Olaf has his ultimate to go right through the CC. And Olaf's third ability, which deals true damage, goes right through your shield. So, this is not the best draft for, for Braum, to be honest, because Olaf will go right through him. There we go, Vayne gets a kill. And then you know, champions like Lucian like Senna are also really good picks against Braum. You want to be careful against those because they shoot lasers. You know, Lucian's first ability is a laser, Senna's basic attack and Senna's first ability is a laser, so that's dangerous. Another thing is champions like Morgana. You want to be careful against those types of champions because um, Morgana's second ability doesn't care about your shield. It's going to burn right through you. So, you know, champions that have these non-directional attacks or champions that have these these laser attacks, those you want to be careful of, because your shield is going to be useless against them. Um, and another tip that I have for you guys, this is this is uh, directly from Keys as well. Do like how do you correctly use Brahm's ultimate? And the way that he told me is, you kinda, I mean, of course it's not the same, but you kinda have to see it like Corky's package. Because um, there's, you know, a lot of people see Brahm's ultimate as just a knockup, right? You just see it as a knockup, and yeah, it's a nice knockup, but no, that's not it, guys. Here we can already see him roam around, by the way. Um, I'll talk about the ultimate later. Let's first talk about what's happening right here. Keys is roaming. You see how beautiful this is already? Galio and, and Katarina are speechless. They're just left right there, you know? Like, what the hell? Why did Braum just roam around? Here you can see how much value you can provide to your team when you roam around. Oof, the enemy team has stolen it. But look at that ultimate! But you can see how much, there's so much happening, it's hard for me to tell, but first let's talk about roaming around. You saw him immediately roam around when his team was doing the Rift Herald. Obviously really, really good. He provided so much value to his team and he secured the fight, he secured the win right there. So now let's talk about the second thing that I wanted to talk about, which is the ultimate. See the ultimate as a Corky package. I really like that advice that he gave. And yet again, it's not the same, but um, um, you knock up the enemy, but it's not as strong knock up wise because the first enemy that you hit sure you're gonna knock him up for a long time but the way that Brahms ultimate works is if you hit multiple enemies at the same time the other enemies are only gonna get knocked up for 0 0.25 seconds which is basically nothing but what is strong about Brahms ultimate is the icy area this is a thing that gets ignored by a lot of players but not by keys guys look at that by the way Look at, look at that stun that he's constantly getting from his passive. Boom on the Galio as well. Boom on the Aurelia as well. He's just constantly applying his, his passive on the enemies. Like literally playing Braum perfectly. Look at this. Like if you if you if you rewind this fight, you can see that he was able to apply his passive on all four enemies. He stunned four. <coughs> Uh, he stunned four enemies and just completely destroyed them. Like this is this is pretty much perfect brawl play right here. I wanna say though, in this game, it's currently going pretty much like the worst case scenario. They've lost first turret, they've lost the Rift Herald, and they've lost the dragon. Unfortunately, it just it that's what happened. But Keys played it perfectly. Like this, this is absolutely perfect here we can see again he's ambushing them i assume he might use his ultimate right here okay he actually saved his ultimate but uh, that could have been a good moment to ult but he was like yeah 
Oh, maybe he was actually waiting for level 9 to get his upgraded ultimate. And he was like, nah, we, we might be able to get a kill here, but I'm just not gonna use it here. Let's see. So we can see that he's playing it very aggressively. He starts off with a shield. Oh, there's a... There's a Pantheon coming. There's really nothing that he can do right there for this Vayne, unfortunately. Vayne manages to get another kill, but he couldn't have done anything here. What? He survives? He gets a sneaky ultimate. He stuns the bandit. Oh my god. This is top-notch brawn gameplay right here. He uses it so the second ability can be an aggressive ability and a defensive ability, right? Um, there's many things that you can do with the second ability. So the first and most obvious thing is giving ma uh, armor and magic resist to your team, right? Like when you dash to an ally, you and your ally get bonus armor and magic resist. But honestly, that's not like the strongest part of the second ability. Sure, it's nice, but it doesn't give that many stats. It's not like Janna's shield or, you know, like Morgana's shield. It's not that strong. Of course, it's good, but it has other utilities to it too. First of all, you can dash to your ally, right? Secondly, you can dash to a minion in case you have to. So you can use it aggressively by dashing to an ally and then either using your first ability or your ultimate. So, and you can use it passively like he did in the fight earlier. He dashed away from the enemy and then, he, you know, he played it safely. He used his redemption, ultimate, everything like that. And he was able to get away from the enemy. So there is multiple, multiple ways that you can use the ultimate and just basically use it, use it for, uh, use it to dash. He has his ultimate again. Wow, that, that sneaky dodge on the cardio. Let's see what's gonna happen in ultimate. Boom, like the Corky package. Look at that slow. That's what, like, that's why he told me Corky package. If he had only used his ultimate for the knockup, maybe he wouldn't have used it that way. But if you change your mindset while playing Braun and really, really consider the icy area as well as the knockup, that, wow, you just, look at this. He's just everywhere but really consider the icy area as well because it's big it's big like the icy, icy area is big then you're gonna then you're really gonna start to use uh, bronze ultimate properly guys look at this no fear he has his heal as well in case he needs it he doesn't use it because he doesn't need it here he's gonna use it boom for the vein and oh my god just like just look at this jam of a brom game look at this I mean, can it really get any better than this? Can it? Because no, it cannot actually. This is literally the perfect, perfect, perfect Braum gameplay right here. And I recommend you guys to actually go back to the fights and analyze what happened. Because it's it's too much for me to talk about. That In this video, I'm being overwhelmed with everything that's happening. Because it's literally too much for me to explain. So go back in the fights, like rewind the video, especially if you really want to get good at Braum. And... Analyze what happened, you know, analyze what happened and apply it yourself. So now he's getting the six convergence and this is gonna make him and Vayne infinitely stronger. Like now he wants to be around the Vayne or the Corky because they, you know, they're gonna be utilizing the bonus from the six convergence the most. Um, let's take a look at what's gonna happen. So again, he's roaming around. Here he is for his teammate. Ah, uh, he didn't get the assist. He has 19 out of 21 assists. He just missed this one. Would have been 20 out of 21. That's just crazy, like getting so many assists as a support. Like when you're roaming around, look at how fast he is, by the way. Dead Man's Plate plus Pathfinder. That's what it does. You're so fast and you can just roam around across the entire map so rapidly. Like look at this, look at how fast he is. He's gonna flash Q. He's gonna flash. Look, he's gonna flash combo it. <laughs> nice one, bro. <laughs> talking so well about him and he just does that all right keys all right <laughs> i knew that he would flash q but i didn't know that he would fail it so miserably so let's just not talk about that anymore all right guys let's just let's just ignore that let's focus on the good only <laughs> oh i'm doing a skin giveaway again by the way this season 10 legendary skins so all you have to do is put down a comment under this video give the video a like if you're enjoying it you know, if you, especially if you enjoy these types of collaborations with some other players too, to see other perspectives too, because obviously people, these people have different playstyles than me. Uh, I think it's a great idea, you know, it helps content creators, and this time it helped me a lot as well. 
massive shout out to Keys because I'm sick with COVID right now and I cannot play the game. So Keys was amazing and instantly came to my rescue. You know, I told him, yo, Keys, can you can you send me some gameplay? And he was like, of course, man, of course. And he sent me this amazing prom game for me to make a video. So basically, I would not have uploaded a video today if it weren't for Keys. So that's why I really want to ask you guys. Wow, and he just saves, he just, just casually, casually saves the listener right there. That's why I really want to ask you guys to just check out his stream, Twitter, you know, he, he's a really nice dude. He has nice posts on Twitter, but especially his Twitch. Amazing streams, really. Like, I really, really want to encourage him to stream more. And he is streaming more. And I, I want you guys to do the same. It's just absolutely amazing to watch. Uh, let's take a look at this. So he can get that Warden's Mill, which is a really good item. Uh, on Braum especially, because you're going to be reducing enemies attack speed. But random is Omen in this game? Let's see. I mean, it makes sense, yeah. Against the Caitlyn for the crit damage, Irelia reduced her and her attack speed. Okay item, definitely. Boom. Oh, oops. <laughs> Let's take a look. I'm just curious about how he's going to ult, to be honest. So he uses his redemption for vision here because redemption also gives vision to your teammates. Oh my god. Oh, there we go. He hit him. He hit him again. I'm pretty sure the enemy is at 1 HP right there. Pretty sure the enemy is at 1 HP. So actually, when you have Zeke's Convergence, you don't really want to do it like this. You kind of want to use your ultimate early on in the fight because you want to be utilizing the slowing area from the Ziggs Convergence and you want your ADC to be utilizing the burning damage uh, that, that he or she gets. So when you get the Ziggs Convergence, try to prioritize ulting early. Of course you don't have to, but try to prioritize it early. What is he going to do? He goes for the Warmock? Hmm. On my way from the Honestly, dragon. I wouldn't be able to tell you guys why he's going for a Warmock. Oh, Pantheon is gonna steal it. Pantheon is gonna steal it. There we go. Pantheon has stolen every single objective in this game already. Pretty sad, but they're still doing they're still doing well in this game, of course. Boom boom. Boom. Watch him just solo the skating by the way. Ah, it's not even necessary. But he, like, he, he would have been able to 1 versus 1 the Caitlyn. Braum, you know, if you get ahead in a game, it's going to be insanely hard for the enemy to uh, 1 versus 1 you. Because of your shield, your ultimate, your first ability, your passive, and redemption. <laughs> everything, really. But yeah, this game has been, more like, absolutely hard carried by Braum. Vayne wasn't even doing that well, but just, Braum, man. He's tanking up, oh, he tanked like two shots for his Vincin. Look at that. The <laughs> oh, what a disgusting champion Braum is really. Like Braum in the, in the white hands is such a stupid champion. Like have you guys ever played against the Braum that you were just never able to kill? Keys is basically that. And you can become that as well if you apply these tips. And especially, like I'm giving you advice right here, but he streams on Twitch. And you can ask him advice live on his Twitch as well if you want to check it out. So, yet again, encouraging you to do so. He actually chooses to go for the Frozen Heart instead of the uh, uh, Randuin's Omen. And I feel like that's to re especially reduce Irelia's attack speed. Because Irelia is not going to be focusing him. Irelia is going to be focusing other allies. But if he's around the Irelia, he's going to be reducing her attack speed by 20% if he gets the Frozen Heart. Compared to the Randuin's Omen that wouldn't do anything unless Irelia hits him. So it's actually a really good decision for him to go for Frozen Heart instead of the Randuin's Omen. Because he's going to be reducing the attack speed from Irelia massively as well as the Caitlyn that's going to be hitting him. I mean, enemies can just surrender at this point. It's over. He's gonna ult him. Oh, I might. Yeah, this game is over. Like, they can just finish the game right here. He's stacking up the damage like a real support should. And there it is. Let's take a look at how much damage and everything like that everyone did. <clears throat> He's master rank right now. He's the MVP, of course. Three kills. 31 assists out of 37 so he has participated in 34 out of 37 kills so thank you so much for watching and massive shout out to keys for providing me this gameplay and uh, yeah check him out and uh, i will see you all
in the next Wildbiff video. Bye-bye.